is God bless. Welcome back to my channel. I am Charlene and welcome to another Bible reading. Today will be day 91 and we'll be reading Judges 6 through 7. And y'all, let me be real with y'all. I already recorded this. Forgot that my battery was on 5% and proceed and didn't even get past. I think I was like around here somewhere and the phone just died. But I'm going to start over because I know my voice and stuff be changing depending on morning, noon, even night. And that was in the morning, which might not have been the worst thing because I was really sleepy. But let us go ahead and pray and try to do this all over again. <laughs> oh, Heavenly Father, Lord, we thank you. We thank you for this beautiful day. Lord, we thank you for your word. We ask that you continue to lead and guide us so that we may know you, Lord God. We love you for who you truly are, Lord God. And we thank you for saving us. We thank you for your grace and your mercy. We thank you for your words of truth. In Jesus' name, amen. And it's a hot one today, y'all. Lord, be with me. Another reason why I like doing this stuff in the morning. But nonetheless, we must progress. All right, so I am reading from the New Living Translation or NLT. I'm reading from the Inspire Faith Bible. Well, of course, you don't have to have the exact Bible, but if you are enjoying the artworks and stuff on the side and you like the space or opportunity for writing notes and being creative, then the Inspire Bible is right for you. All right, chapter six, y'all. The Israelites did evil in the Lord's sight. So the Lord handed them over to the Midianites for seven years. The Midianites were so cruel that the Israelites made hiding places for themselves in the mountains, caves, and strongholds. Whenever the Israelites planted their crops, Meroders from Median, Amalek, and the people of the east would attack Israel, camping in the land and destroying crops as far away as Gaza. They left the Israelites with nothing to eat taking all the sheep, goats, cattle, and donkeys. These enemies, hordes, coming with their livestock and tents, were as thick as locusts. They arrived on droves of camels, too numerous to count, and they stayed until the land was stripped bare. So Israel was reduced to starvation by the Midianites. Then the Israelites cried out to the Lord for help. When they got real low and they ain't had nothing, that's when they cried out to the Lord. And we do the same thing. When they cried out to the Lord because of Median, the Lord sent a prophet to the Israelites. He said, this is what the Lord, the God of Israel says. I brought you up out of slavery in Egypt. I rescued you from the Egyptians and from all the op oppressed, all who oppressed you. Excuse me. I drove out your enemies and gave you, the, gave you their land. I told you I am the Lord, your God. You must not worship the gods of the Amorites in whose land you now live, but you have not listened to me. And God did warn that if you let people stay among you, you let their women and their children stay among you, they're going to influence you and they're going to turn you away from me. And he said, it's going to happen, not if it's going to happen, but that it will happen if they did not listen to him and drove out everybody and took over their lands and not let them influence them. But of course, this is proof that what's clean can get dirty if exposed to something dirty that's scientific like if you put a muddy shirt on a pile of clean clothes you might as well wash the whole piles of clothes one rotten apple spoils the whole bunch one strawberry in a batch will make the whole thing rotten you guys get the picture verse 11 then the angel of the lord came and sat beneath the great tree at oprah which belonged to joash of the clan of Abiezer, Gideon, son of Joash, was threshing wheat at the bottom of the wine press to hide the grain from the Midianites. The angel of the Lord appeared to him and said, Mighty hero, the Lord is with you. Imagine being called mighty hero. Sir, Gideon replied, if the Lord is with us, why has all this happened to us? And where are all the miracles our ancestors told us about? Didn't they say the Lord brought us out of Egypt? But now the Lord has abandoned us and handed us over to the Midianites. Then the Lord turned to him and said, go with the strength you have and rescue Israel from the Midianites. I am sending you. So he's like, look, I'm giving the approval. I'm giving you the permission authority, go. But the but Lord Gideon replied, how can I rescue Israel? My clan is the weakest in the whole tribe of Manasseh and I am the least in my entire family. Doesn't this whole array of conversation sound familiar? <laughs> You know it. The Lord said to him, I will be with you and you will destroy the Midianites as if you were fighting against one man. 
Gideon replied, if you are truly going to help me, show me a sign to prove that is really the Lord speaking to me. Don't go away until I have, excuse me, until I come back and bring my offering to you. He answered, I will stay here until you return. Gideon hurried home. He cooked a young goat and with a basket of flour, he baked some bread without yeast. Then carrying the meat in a basket and the broth in a pot, he brought them out and presented them to the angel who was under the great tree. The angel of God said to him, place the meat and the unleavened bread on this rock and pour the broth over it. And Gideon did as he was told. Then the angel of the Lord touched the meat and bread with the tip of the staff in his hand and fire flamed up from the rock and consumed all he had brought. And the angel of the Lord disappeared. When Gideon replied that it was the angel of the Lord, he cried out, O oh, sovereign Lord, I am doomed. I have seen the angel of the Lord face to face. So he was proved who was with him. And then now he's scared, right? Like, uh-oh. So this truly was from God, right? I am, I'm going to perish. I'm going to die. Nobody has seen God face to face. But this is one of those Christophany where Christ is believed to be somewhere in the Old Testament. And in this particular subject and passage, this is believed to be Christ. Christ seemed to have taken on the role of the messenger to bring a very important message and speaking with the authority of God. No regular angel can do that. They can speak saying God is with them, but as far as speaking as if the authority belongs to them, that's only Christ. Only he can do that. And that's why he was crucified because they said he was claiming to be king of the Jews. And that's literally what was put on top of his uh, cross. That was like blasphemous to the to God himself. But we know better, right? All right, verse 23. It is all right, the Lord replied. Do not be afraid. You will not die. And Gideon built an altar to the Lord there and named it Yahweh Shalom, which means the Lord is peace. The altar remains an Oprah in the land, which means... Hold on. The altar remains an Oprah in the land of the clan of Ebezer to this day. And y'all, I am so sorry. I don't know what my husband's even doing. The yard is cut, so I don't know. Obviously, I would not have recorded if I knew he was going to get on there, but let's just press through. That night, the Lord said to Gideon, take the second bull from your father's herd, the one that is seven years old. Pull down your father's altar to bow and cut down the Asherah pole standing beside it. Then build an altar to the Lord your God here on this hilltop sanctuary. Land the stones carefully. Sacrifice the bull as a burnt offering on the altar using as fuel, as fuel the wood of the Asherah pole you cut down. So Gideon took 10 of his servants and did as the Lord had commanded. But he did it at night because he was afraid of the other members of his father's household and the people of the town. So this is uh, very interesting because we know now we have been constructed and instructed to not fear. But this also proves that we are to be wise. You don't go in the middle of a satanic ceremony and say God is God right like that you don't put yourself in that predicament but in your own free will and time and space and opportunity um you are free to proclaim God for who he is if God leads you to go to uh nursing homes or orphanage or shelters or if you're just on the street in front of somewhere where you know you can be someone can be a witness to what's going on to you that's one thing, but you don't like go to a, a Satanist home where it's just you and him, no witnesses, no anything, and they take you over. You don't do that. You use wisdom about everything that you do, and you pray and make sure that God wants you to go where you think you should go to. 28. Early the next morning, as the people of the town began to stir, someone discovered that the altar of Baal had been broken down and that the astral pole beside it had been cut down. In their place, a new altar had been built, and on it were the remains of the bull that had been sacrificed. The people said to each other, who did this? And after asking around and making a careful search, they learned that it was Gideon, the son of Joash. Now, every time I read this part, I always find it interesting because y'all know when y'all watch stories about like solving mysteries and murders and all that stuff, there's always that one person that saw or heard something like you're never going to get ready with, way with anything, no matter how hard you try, whether it's at night, in the middle of the night, early morning, 
winter, spring, fall. Somebody's always watching. All right. But Joash shouted to the mob that confronted him. Oh, hold on. 30, I'm sorry. Bring out your son, the men of the town, the man of Joash. He must die for destroying the altar of Baal and for cutting down the Asherah pole. But Joash shouted to the mob that confronted him. Why are you defending Baal? Will you argue his case? Whoever pleads his case will be put to death by morning. If Baal truly is a god, let him defend himself and destroy the one who broke down his altar. From then on, Gideon was called Jerobal, which means let Baal defend himself because he broke down Baal's altar, which is the whole point that God was trying to even tell them in the first place. Like y'all worshiping something that y'all made, that y'all created, that y'all put together. But I am the creator. But somehow you keep getting tricked and manipulated into believing these man-made things that have no life, they have no power, and they have no authority. Verse 33. Soon afterwards, the army of Median, Amalek, and the people of the east formed an alliance against Israel and crossed the Jordan, camping in the valley of Jezreel. Then the spirit of the Lord clothed Gideon with power. He blew a ram's horn as a call to arms, and the men of the clans of Abizer came to him. He also sent messengers throughout Manasseh, Asher, Zebulun, and Naphtali, summoning their warriors, and all of them responded. Then Gideon said to God, if you are truly going to use me to rescue Israel, as you promised, prove it to me in this way. I will put a wool fleece on the threshing floor tonight. If the fleece is wet with dew in the morning, put but the ground is dry, then I will know that you are going to help me rescue Israel as you promised. And that is just what happened. When Gideon got up early the next morning, he squeezed the fleece and wrung out a whole bowl full of water. Then Gideon said to God, please don't be angry with me, but let me make one more request. Let me use the fleece for one more test. This time, let the fleece remain dry while the ground around it is wet with dew. So that night, God did as Gideon asked. The fleece was dry in the morning, but the ground was covered with dew. Y'all learned about this story in Sunday school, and I just thought it was so fun and interesting. Like, there are so many places and incidents where people speak and it's like they're human just like us you know we have to remember that they're humans they're humans just like we are they're they're average they're some of them aren't so special or great um a lot of them don't have any really special gifts or talents besides having faith in god and we can relate to that that god who is all powerful and all knowing can allow one of us his creations <laughs> say hey god I want to make sure that you are you and you're going to do what you say. And can you do this for me? And not only ask once, but two, three, four times. My husband even um, testified to y'all that whenever he has a question or wants to move on God's behalf or wants to do something, he says, Lord, please confirm to me two or three times and God will surely do that. And his whole point is, God, I'm human. Lord, I am humbly coming to you because I am not the brightest crayon in the box. So you need to tell me something two, three times so I can get it. And God does just that. And I just thank God for him being patient with us, that even when we're working out our faith, he is still faithful and he will listen to our cry. All right. So that was chapter six, chapter seven. So Jeroboam, that is Gideon and his army got up early and went as far as the spring of Herod. The armies of Median were camped north of them in the valley near the hill of Morrow. The Lord said to Gideon, you have too many words with you. If I let all of you fight, the Midianites, the Israelite will boast to me that they saved themselves by their own strength. Therefore, tell the people, whoever is timid or afraid may leave this mountain and go home. So 22,000 of them went home, leaving only 10,000 who were willing to fight. Can you imagine someone asking the, our army, our U.S. military, if y'all scared, go home? I wonder how many people would leave. Now, after some training and some determination, obviously people come home and say, I'm glad I did what I did. I'm proud, da, 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 da. But I want to like initially going in. If they said, if you're scared, go home. I wonder how many people turn away. But the Lord told Gideon, there are still too many. Bring them down to the spring and I will test them to determine who will go with you and who will not. When Gideon took his warriors down to the water, the Lord told him, divide the men into two groups and one group, Put all those who cut water in their hands and lap it up with their tongues like dogs. And the other group put all those who kneel down and drink with their mouths in the stream. 
only 300 of the men drank from their hands. All the others got down to their knees and drank with their mouths in their stream, in the stream. Now, I, obviously, I believe, obviously God knew who was going to do what. And it's interesting because the choice that he made was the fewer men. The Lord told Gideon, with these 300 men, I will rescue you and give you victory over the Midianites. Send all the others home. So Gideon collected and the provisions and ram horns of the other warriors and sent them home. But he kept 300 men with him. The Midianites camp was in the valley just below Gideon. That night, the Lord said, get up, go down into the Midianites camp, for I have given you victory over them. But if you are afraid to attack, go down to the camp with your servant, Pur. Listen to what the Midianites are saying, and you will be greatly encouraged. Then you will be eager to attack. So Gideon took Pur and went down to the edge of the enemy camp. The armies of Midian, Amalek, and the people of the east had settled in the valley like a swarm of locusts. Their camels were like grains of sand on the seashore, too many to count. Gideon crept up just as a man was telling his companion about a dream. The man said, I had this dream, and in my dream, a loaf of barley bread came tumbling down into the Midianite camp. It hit a tent, turned it over, and knocked it flat. His companion answered, your dream can mean only one thing. God has given Gideon, son of Joash, son of Joash, the Israelite victory over Media in all these alleys. So we know that some dreams are messages, messages from the Lord. You discern through the Holy Spirit and God's word. If it doesn't match, then it's probably just of your imagination or, you know, certain foods can make the mind hyper, like a lot of sugar. And a lot of chips and stuff can make your mind really, really active and hyper in, your, hyper in your sleep, especially if you eat it late in the day, which is why we should stay away from those things, right? But just be careful and be wise and take it up with the Lord and the Lord will answer you, of course. And of course, I'm still making marks in mine. But this is a very sensitive lead pencil. Like, it is going to write. I give it that. Um, when Gideon heard the dream and its interpretation, he bowed and worshiped before the Lord. Then he returned to the Israelite camp and shouted, get up, for the Lord has given you victory over the Midianites' hordes. He divided the 300 men into three groups and gave each man a ram's horn and a clay jar with a torch in it. Then he said to them, keep your eyes on me. When I come to the edge of the camp, do just as I do. As soon as I and those with me blow the ram's horn, blow your horns too, all around the entire camp, and shout for the Lord and for Gideon. I just thought about it. That's technically like his third confirmation because he asked for a sign with the fleece two times, and then there was a dream. So still working in threes, Lord, I see. It was just after midnight, after the changing of the guard, when Gideon and the hundred men with him reached the edge of the midnight camp. Suddenly, they blew the ram's horns and broke their clay jars. Then all three groups blew their horns and broke their jars. They held the blazing torches in their left hands and the horns in their right hands. And they all shouted, a sword for the Lord and for Gideon. Each man stood at his position around the camp and watched as all the Midianites rushed around in a panic, shouting as they ran to escape. When the 300 Israelites blew their ram's horns, the Lord caused the warriors in the camp to fight against each other with their swords. Those who were not killed fled to places as far as Bathsheba, near Zaria, and to the border of Abel Mahola, near Tabith. Then Gideon sent for the warriors of Nepotelli, Asher, and Vanessa. <laughs> Excuse me, y'all. Who joined in chasing the army of Median. Gideon also sent messengers throughout the hill country of Ephraim, saying, Come down to attack the Midianites. Cut them off at the shallow crossings of the Jordan River at Beth Barah. So all the men of Ephraim did as they were told. They captured Oreb and Zeb and the two Midianite commanders, killing Oreb at the Rock of Oreb and Zeb at the winepress of Zeb. And they continued to chase the Midianites afterward. The Israelites, excuse me, serious, pause, run those sentence. Afterwards, the Israelites brought the heads of Oreb and Zeb to Gideon, who was by the Jordan River. Whew, second time reading that today, y'all. Lord be with me. And it's so wordy, too. Mm -mm -mm. But anywho, that is the reading of chapter 6 and 7. If you have any questions and concerns, please comment down below. I would love to hear from you all. Very interesting turn of events here. We see God's hand with whom he 
may give victory and we see enemies by default. Like, okay, because if God is for one, he has to be against the other, right? And God was always faithful and committed to his people. And that's a lesson in itself that whoever God gave you, whether it be your family, your spouse, your children, remain faithful. All right, y'all. Y'all can comment down below. Please don't forget to like, share, and please subscribe to this video if you haven't already done so. But more importantly, give this video a thumbs up. I absolutely love y'all. God bless. Take care. Bye.